welcome back. It's good to see you again. You know, during this latest lockdown, I've been going through my camera gear and really making some hard decisions about the types of things that I need to keep and the types of things that really maybe don't make the grade anymore. As you get older as a photographer, one of the considerations that comes into play more and more is the simple weight and physical dimensions of any of the gear that you own. We've read a lot and seen a lot and heard a lot about different cameras and how the cameras themselves are getting smaller and smaller and smaller as mirrorless cameras come into play. Well, interestingly, many of the lenses that are associated with those mirrorless cameras aren't much smaller. In fact, they're bigger, they're heavier, they're more optically interesting, but harder to manage for somebody that's older like me. So I went through my lens collection recently. I have 11 different lenses and they range in focal length from 17 millimeters at the extreme wide end to 400 millimeters at the other end. And 11 different lenses covering that range of focal lengths probably seems a little extreme. So that was my starting point. Do I really need that many lenses to cover that range of focal lengths? And what about focal lengths outside that? Is there a future need for perhaps trying to accommodate that in some way? So I sat down and I wrote out a list of pros and cons for each lens. But at the end of the day, you know what? For me, it really all came down to weight and to physical dimensions of the lens and whether or not I'd be able to carry it going forward. So I wanted to show you some examples of the different lenses in my collection and why I'm having to make some different decisions. So the first one I'm going to start out with is a um, Sigma Art series lens and it's a um, 20 millimeter f1.4 and you can see it here. <laughs> Let's take the cap off. Um, this is a beautiful, amazing lens. I'm absolutely delighted with it. It uh, serves a whole bunch of purposes for me, not the least of which is astrophotography. Um, I am able to do amazing astrophotography images even from my driveway in a suburban subdivision in almost uh, relatively close to Toronto, which is a big city with a lot of light pollution, but I'm still able to get good pictures of the sky because of the amazing optical qualities of this lens. But as I sit here holding it, <laughs> I'm almost having to go to two hands. Now, maybe it isn't meant to be carried for long distances because typically when you set up for astrophotography, um, you may be driving to a location or camping at a location and then uh, setting up and being there for several hours. Nonetheless, um, unfortunately, I've had to make the decision that this isn't going to be a lens in my collection going forward simply because of its weight. Next up in the collection is another of the Sigma Art series. This time it's an f2.8 14-24 to zoom, very wide angle zoom. And this one, oh my goodness, is even heavier than the previous one. I could literally do weightlifting with this one if I so chose. So chose? So choosed? <laughs> um, when I bought it, I thought, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to handle this. And it's turned out to be absolutely true. Carrying this around for a day to do landscape photography has proven to be more of an issue than I can manage. Um, amazing lens, amazing optical quality, amazing images result from it, but like the previous one, it's just too heavy for me to manage. Um, like the other one, it has a fixed lens hood and a bulbous front end, uh, but the amount of light that it gathers is uh, extraordinary. So, um, some people would find this an easy decision to make, to include it in their kit. 
I'm finding it an easy decision to make to remove it from my kit, unfortunately, even though I love the lens uh, and wish it could stay. If there was an anti-gravity device out there, I would certainly love to find out where I could get one. <laughs> you know, the other decision factor that we are often asked to take into account is the speed of the lens. Um, we all are familiar with the hype around faster is better, faster is better, f2.8, f1.4, f1.2, Nocta lens, I think that was f1 or f0.98. And the hype around all of those seem to be amazing in terms of trying to get you to buy them. But if you really stop and ask yourself, do I need that type of lens? Uh, do I need that type of speed uh, to be able to accomplish the type of photography that I'm interested in? The answer is usually no. But when you look through your images, whether it be in Lightroom or, or whatever organizing mechanism you use, you'll probably find that the majority of your images are taken with um, aperture settings that are f4 or above. Um, it's kind of interesting to find that out, actually. If you're outside in daylight most of the time, then having a really fast lens may only be valuable to you when you're in I don't know, the middle of a woodland setting, the middle of a swamp, <laughs> the middle of a, um, a dark architectural feature, uh, the inside of a church, for example. So it's something that you really need to spend some time thinking about, just how fast is fast enough. Every decision that you make about your gear has to take into account pros and cons. And I want to illustrate that by showing you two lenses that, at least in focal length, are exactly the same, but they're very different in terms of what they offer as a, as a, uh, a piece of kit uh, that you carry around with you. So here they are. On the one hand, we have a 35 millimeter RF lens for the RF series of mirrorless cameras by Canon. And on the other hand, we have a 35 millimeter Sigma Art lens. Um, one, the, the Sigma Art lens is twice the weight of the other. And as you can probably tell side by side, um, the Sigma Art lens is substantially bigger than the other. I love both of these lenses. They both serve a purpose for me in different ways. But at the end of the day, the one I'm going to take with me is the one that I can carry. And that's going to be the RF lens for the Canon mirrorless body. So there's one last comparison that I'd like to talk a little bit about. Um, camera manufacturers and lens manufacturers are starting to realize that one of the target populations that they have is older photographers like myself who either take up photography after they retire or added on to other interests such as travel or, I don't know, photographing their grandkids uh, at sporting events, for example. One of the things that has come into play is the need for a lens that's very versatile, that can handle both wide angle and close up photography. So we're starting to see more and more the emergence of super telephoto zoom lenses that have 10 or 15 or 20 times optical zooms. Now smaller, uh, I'll call them pocket cameras, have had that for a long time where the lenses are not removable so they have to have a range of focal lengths in order to allow the camera to be useful to the owner. But now you're starting to see lenses where that type of um, zoom range is becoming available uh, as a lens that you can attach and detach from your camera. So I'd like to show you an illustration of one of those. So first of all, I'm going to put up my uh, previous um, Sigma lens that I showed just a moment ago. This is the three pound 14 to 24 f 2.8 uh, lens. As I mentioned, three pounds, so you could definitely do your gymnastics, or not gymnastics, your weightlifting with this. Um, but right beside it, I'm going to put up an RF 
24 to 240. Uh, now this, by design, is not intended to be as fast. It's an F4 to F6.1 range, so it is a variable aperture uh, lens, but it provides a 10 times optical zoom in a footprint that's smaller than the 14 to 24. And I haven't actually checked the weight on it, but it feels as though it's about half the weight. So one of the decision points is, are you willing to consider, I'm gonna put this heavy one down because it's starting to bother me. Um, are you willing to consider um, a lens that isn't as fast, that maybe does have a little bit of optical distortion or optical vignetting, um, especially at the longer focal lengths are you willing to accept that as a trade-off for the ability to carry one lens that serves a multitude of purposes and doesn't weigh very much? I think more and more you're going to find that non-professional folks like me are going to want this type of solution for their photography and not um, having and not not have the need to carry five or six different lenses that comprise all the focal lengths that are included in this one lens. I recently watched a, a, a review by Nigel Danson, who's one of my favorite landscape photographers, where he took a lens with a similar range of focal lengths out and used it for landscape photography and came back with some amazing images. So by far, with the lenses improving in optical quality and getting better and better all the time, you're going to probably start to see this kind of versatility and this kind of flexibility becoming more and more prominent with lenses. And it may make my future decisions about what lenses to include in my kit pretty darn easy. So the ability to walk comfortably while carrying my gear and not worry about sore shoulders or the after effects of lugging around a heavy pack is worth it to me at this stage of my life. So hopefully these tips have been helpful to you and you'll start to at least get some ideas of ways that you can approach assessing your own kit so that you can make some better informed decisions about the lenses you really need for your photography going forward. So if you found this video useful, please leave me a comment and don't forget if you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel and ring the bell to be notified of future videos. It would really help me out if you did that, and I'd really appreciate it. Thank you, and hopefully we'll see you again in about a week.